Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we have another interview talking to some of the creators of Arms Trade Tycoon. Now this time we're focusing on the design process, how you yourself would be able to build these vehicles when it comes to creating your masterpieces. It was a very fun uh, interview and also I asked a bunch of questions which were brought up by you guys and uh, near the end of the uh, interview so make sure to check it out and also if you want to know more about Arms Trade Tycoon they do have an official discord I'll make sure to leave it in a pinned comment uh, so therefore you can go and join it. I highly recommend it. Uh, this is a game that I'm personally looking forward to a lot and hopefully in the future it will become at least some kind of vision close to what I'm hoping for. So uh, yeah, what, what we wanted to show today is more or less sort of the end of the uh, that part of the game loop that corresponds for the tank design. And if you remember that uh, previously we talked about, you know, how you sort of get different parts, you know, you we go from the uh, six different research trees, right, for hull, turret, mobility, and so on. So you research different components, you research different modifications. This is the sort of step one. Then in step two, what you would do as a player, you would go to the engineering building. This is where you take the components and play around them to create sort of uh, different versions that suits you, particular for your needs, for the customer, and so on. So we talked about this last time, if you remember. So th that's that's step two. And uh, now, sort of the the end of this chain. Uh, before you, you know, you jump to the production, to logistics, contracts, and other stuff. This is the actual design. So we go to this building. Uh, you have uh, like different activities. Uh, we're going to look at this, the activity that is marked by, you know, a fresh-looking tank. The other one with the tanks that is uh, a bit weared out, we will not talk today. Let's leave it for the future. But we go here. And we basically start our design from scratch. So, and as we promised, we are now back again in the 3D environment. So this is our design lab. And uh, the cornerstone, the, the, the first step in making a tank is choosing your hull. You can see we have five of those at the moment available. Or, uh, they are the native English ones. The fifth one, this is the... German one, the L from LK series. So let's assume that you took it by, yeah, by the you, you purchase it from a country or you you manage to get it from a task. So there we go. But it is you know you can notice directly that it's uh, it's colored with a native British color. You know this kind of hockey green color. I suppose that's the right name for this. And as soon as we pick that one up then a number of slots opens here. Uh, they are chosen depending on the connectivity, so you have uh, yeah, the basic corner steps. So we have the running gear, the turret, uh, some secondary, and the power unit. And uh, we basically go on, and now we play, okay, we decide which running gear to choose. We have different ones. So this is the native one, right? This is the one that was installed by default. We can, for example, decide to go for with this one. <laughs> that's the well. That comes from another store. Or we can go for this one. It depends. Depends what you want to get. Um, and we continue. So we go to the turret again. And we can take the default one. Or we can take uh, maybe less turreted turret like that. <laughs> So th this one is actually coming. It's compatible, but it's, you know, when we say turret, we mean a bit broader class. We mean both the, the turrets in the classical sense, that they are, they are rotatable, but we also mean uh, like sponsons and different superstructures. So in this case, this is clearly comes from Mark V series, the superstructure. Um, and then we fill in the gap. So we have two slots in this case. We have one slot for one machine gun. That's on the side. We have another slot for 
other machine gun we can take a different one just for the sake of this and uh yeah we go to the power unit uh we can select well we can play with any actually we have three available there so let's take this one and uh yeah th th that's that's the streamlined process so again all of these components it is expected that you have sort of played around with them previously in the engineering stage you created different versions you can have different versions on the whippet running gear or lk uh, like, uh, use the slots wisely uh, use the modifications that, that you need and now you sort of use the ones that you have made to create the tank that you really need you really like and uh, yeah just also to make it uh, to give it a chance for the player to enjoy the design. So you see we have this uh, possibility to take away the GUI so you can have a really good look in what you decided to do, what you decided to build. Yeah, it looks absolutely wonderful. Like, uh, the as I talked about before, the idea of being able to just build everything like on top of each other and create your own designs, it, it is, at least to me, a very special experience. Like, and the fact that you've also, you know, you talked about before that you weren't sure that you're going to like model the, you know, the interiors and stuff. It's kind of nice to see that, you know, um, when you clicked on the engine parts, it was showing like an X-ray view, with like the uh, all of the the parts working inside. That looks really nice. We will, we will honestly, we will try to uh, kind of strike deeper into the interior as well um of course we won't, won't be able to show everything but there are some there's some space for us to kind of make that even more um in depth but at least the i mean the power the power units they will be there for sure as you can see now um there are a few other things worth to worth to sort of mention here well one of these things you can see there so this will be the design window will be actually the window where you as a player will have a possibility to uh, further customize your own tank. For example, you'll be able to choose different paints. You'll be able to choose different camouflage or different decals for the tank. You do it here. Um, and you will also be able to choose different pieces of the decoration, decor. So like, you know, they, they won't have effect on the actual attributes but they will be there for the pure decoration purpose let's say you can have some nets or some bags or something else just to make it even more unique for your liking so you, yeah you can make a screenshot and show it to your friends i mean look this is what i did um th that's that part and then we have another part uh, if you remember previously we discussed about the crew gear this is the place where the crew gear comes into the design process. So for this particular one, you have three slots, and you have as soon as you click on that, you get the you know you get a few to choose. So let's make a really a crew that is ready for the gas attack. And what else? I guess that one will be good. So they probably won't see that well. Uh, but they will be ready for any gassing from the German side. And now, uh, what we don't have, we don't have select ammunition. It's grayed out. And this is because we, well, we are missing the important component for the ammunition, that is the gun. So then um, let us go back. Uh, well, let's actually go all the way back. So let's start with this design and build something that has their guns so this is the default one you probably yeah kind of classical but now let's build something that is maybe less classical that's using the tadpole or we can actually go on and pick up the mark 8 running gear then we have two slots for the turrets one is uh well that's the one that we've seen before that's the superstructure on top but another one we have a possibility to choose uh, hello there <laughs> We have a possibility to choose one of the uh, one of the sponsors. So let's let's go for this sponsor. Okay, and now we have the guns. So we can actually pick two different guns. Um, one thing I can 
maybe you'll have that as a question, but I can just jump on this directly. You probably you noticed that when I pick up the sponsors, I picked up two in one go. In the future, of course, you will be able to choose, you know, you can take the male one for one side and female for another one. So we will split them. This is just a technicality at the moment. More or less, yeah. less like we did now with the guns, you know, you, you notice that I, I took the short barrel there and the long barrel here. Um, and now we have, yeah, we have a few things to choose. We have uh, quite a few machine guns to equip from there. And uh, yeah, there, for example, and here. And then the power unit there. We have it. Okay. Um, and there we have it. Now with the ammunition slots are available, we have two. Uh, so we pick up the ones that we... We pick up the one that we like the most at the moment. So we take uh, uh, take this one, for example. And again, we can enjoy the view. That's, uh, I really like this option. Make screenshots, enjoy. Yeah, the visuals are amazing. Like it, it, it really does look absolutely beautiful. And uh, I, I'm very, I'm very happy that you went for like as, as you said, like the 3D idea. Like it, it adds a lot, it adds a lot to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, as we discussed last time. You know, when we did this trial with the engineering and uh, put it on the 3D frame, uh, there was no doubt that we need to move to the 3D for the other components. At least everything that comes comes to do with the design of the tank. You know, maybe maybe the office, you know, the administration building will not really benefit that much. But um, when you build a tank, it just you know, it gives you a, a really totally different feeling for the process so that's mm -hmm. it and then uh, yeah if you like you can uh, play further we can build some uh, cursed design as uh, um i don't know let's do yeah let's do this one yeah large seen it he doesn't even react to it, but seen it a few times. <laughs> so uh, yeah, assume you, you you went the classical way. So, well, almost. You see there's like a periscope there that was not there originally. But otherwise, you have the tail, you have the the, the chicken net, and you that would be your first choice, right? But let's say you want to really do it like this. So you actually do, you retain the tail, but have a tadpole extension as well. Or you can do it like that. I mean, it's up to you. Um, and we we finalize that, make it like a hedgehog with a machine gun. So a machine gun there, a machine gun there, another one there, two of the actually. Yeah, and we can put the Zedvikus there. So there you go. Another design that is um, that I believe the world has never seen. And maybe for a good reason. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> that's um, that's the way you build your tank. And of course, you can imagine that when you, you know, when when the game progresses. I mean, you'll have uh, both to the fact that you have more components and the fact that you do more engineering. You will have much more components, you know, for each of the for each of the part. So you'll be able to, yeah, you'll be able really to play around and uh, design something that something that we have not seen. For example, take that you can do a machine like that. You can do a machine like this, and then maybe a machine like that, right? And uh, plug something there. And there, let's say there, very important, and another one there. <laughs> so obviously, we've we've talked about how you know you kind of want to span you know the the history of of tanks um, from obviously the First World War uh, kind of to the modern day. When it comes to the um, let's just I don't know. Uh, obviously, you've talked about getting a demo version out there, but let's say like the initial release of the game. What would be um, for you? What what is the plan for like the era 
that you want to get do you do you straight away want to have everything from the first world war to the modern day or are you focusing on specific periods um well we discussed it and uh, we really strongly believe that the experience that the player that should have should be offered to the player should really stretch through the complete the second 20th century so it should be from the world war one to the modern era even on initial release even on the initial release on the other side on the other side and this is yeah i i understand you it's kind of ambitious right it's very ambitious um, but it's yes i, I like the confidence. But it, it, yeah but it, it uh, there's always a cost so the cost would be on how much different countries we will be able to offer from the initial release so th that is like you can either offer uh say i don't know all five or maybe six or seven and then focus only on the say world war one period stand it a bit of course not make it just you know a couple of years make it longer but still very limited or you can offer a journey over the complete 20th century but for uh fewer countries and at the moment we're leaning that, that that is probably a better choice because you as a player you will be able to experience you know sort of a complete story let's say for the britain maybe for another country or so and uh, then it will be up to you if you want to continue that journey if you want to have more tanks available then you can sort of uh, wait for us to be done with that and uh, get those as well but otherwise you know if if we vote for everything from the start of course we won't be able to do it in a uh you know like one and a half or two years it will take much much longer to do it to balance and to see all the things that, that are rolling so that's so that's a compromise and that's uh I, I think it's a fair compromise to be honest uh one thing that i've also been asked um to ask is uh the idea of uh modding in the game so being able to add your own specific uh parts to the vehicles is that something like are you open to modding possibilities or would you prefer to keep it like a let's say a closed experience well, uh, when we talk about the modding, you know, there's different, uh, uh, let's say, different levels of modding. So what you mentioned that you can, you as a player, you can insert your own tank parts. I would say this is the on one end of modding, really, that you you have complete access. Um, on another level, you can start modding by. Uh, rebalancing you know accessing maybe the attributes of the components the attributes of some in-game processes and other things via well not in the 3d fashion but you will be able to balance it out for your own liking and uh, i think we start you know this journey stepwise so we'll probably start from the easier levels that is you we will offer a possibility to play with the stats uh play let's say with the costs be the production costs, research costs, and so on maybe to some extent even the what kind of events are taking place along the game especially if we're talking about the historical sequence of events and uh, depending on the feedback depending on the effort from the our side how much it will take and also how what will be the impact on the game experience because that's another thing right i mean j just to make the modding you know full swing 100 percent that will that will put a certain toll on our efforts you know that will take the uh, time and energy from the other activities um so yeah limited modding we will try to offer uh, adding the parts directly from the scratch for directly from the start probably not yeah, I think that's fair. And then, um, obviously, we talked about before, you know, the idea of having these campaigns for each nation. Are you still also focusing on that idea of, like, a kind of a create-your-own, uh, I suppose, uh, history, like the, the sandbox idea? Is that still something that is kind of core to the idea as well? Or are you focusing on, as you said, like, these kind of, uh, I suppose, campaigns of each nation? Well, uh 
we will start for each nation we start from the sort of historical sequence or historical mode that will be available that, that's sort of the step one right and then uh depending on the way and uh, depending on several factors but uh, very important how the kickstarter will go of course we we definitely didn't ditch the sandbox mode because we believe that this is the sandbox mode is available and uh, by the sandbox again we mean that uh you as you know your tanks will have a much more profound effect on the outcome of the events like the even the wars you know even the boundaries of the countries and so on uh so we we don't want to ditch that but we won't we don't we don't want to offer it from the beginning because it, it also it's uh it's an undertaking to do it's uh it, it, there is quite a lot of work to do the sandbox in the way we we see that yeah i can understand that is there um uh so we talked about last time also as you said like the kickstarter and stuff do you have any uh defined dates for that or is it just once again you know and later on in the year well we we planned the, as we said initially we planned this fall uh we cannot give you an exact date uh, because we want really to feel not rushed we want to feel ready for this um what i can say for sure that we have uh, we already have a draft for the overall kickstarter campaign the draft that contains uh, well both the you know the layout of the campaign the different pledges stretch goals and the rewards there will be really cool rewards for those who are interested um and uh, so the the base is there the base is there now we are focusing our efforts on uh, uh finishing the demo making the demo ready uh balanced well as much as possible bug free and uh, releasing those two more or less simultaneously. Th that's the plan. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's this is this is at least for me shaping up to look pretty awesome. If I'm honest with you, like uh, the the depth of the design stage is a lot more than I thought it would be. And uh, last time, obviously, we went through like all of the the individual parts and stuff. The only thing I suppose for me now that uh, at least has come together is how all the economy stuff works. But I suppose that that would come like less down in the road, like balancing wise, you know, making sure that there isn't like a, let's call it a meta <laughs> for what to build and everything <laughs> like that. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you will be actually surprised, but I mean, when, when we discuss, when we show the, what we've gone so far to different people, uh, we can see there's a clear trend because some people are like, well, you know, I don't care about the economy. I just want to build the tank and just r really stretch it to the limits, really see. I really try to break it, you know, break the, the attributes, the logic and see what will what will come out of that. So, yeah, I mean, the economy will have to be there, but I, I suppose it will be really two two major groups of people those that are really into the tank design and the rest for them is just a shallow layer that they will they will just need to build their tanks that's it and there will be another big group that is really interested in sort of tycoon aspect but they like the this authenticity of tanks it's not uh, that you cannot substitute with some other merchandise and still play the game so that's and then, of course, there'll be some in between, but I suppose it'll be these two big camps. And coming to the next talk that we hope uh, we'll be ready to show you in, say, two weeks from now or something, that will actually be more focused on the uh, actually the tycoon part. So we will show uh, how it works, how you, you know how the production will work, uh, how the logistics and the warehouse will function. And also dive a bit deeper into the activities that will be available in the administrational building. So that's, as I said, I mean, everything that didn't fit in those five fitted in this one. <laughs> so that's uh, a dump, more or less. Um, yeah. And if the time allows, if the time allows, we can also go a bit further in um, uh, sort of on the world map. 
and discuss a bit, you know, all of these negotiation options that will be available for the player. You know, what does it mean to what is what hides beneath the tank corps, you know, contracts, trophies, and so on, holdings. That's kind of some interesting, uh, some interesting aspects that we want to offer. Um, yeah, and eventually after that, after that milestone is finished, when we sh shown this, then we, uh, then we aim to finally. Oh, how the tank will actually be tested, battle tested. I think this is another very big uh, question that many people have, and uh, just giving that sort of uh, picture will be really appreciated. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, that's that's one of the things that uh, that you know a lot of people have been asking me about, like how how is the actual you know testing area going to work. Uh, because obviously that's going to be, I'm guessing, heavily animated and all of that good stuff. Um, the go ahead. the The last question that I have, um, which was brought up, is you talked about obviously there's going to be different, you know, historical campaigns depending on which countries you know you go for, and obviously many branching paths. Um, is there ideas towards some kind of difficulty? slider like uh uh let's you know you talked about events that happen is there going to be let's say an easy mode a medium mode or is it all just going to be you know kind of the the same difficulty as it goes along probably ramping up eventually with certain events um well there's more to dig into the you know the difficulty but we do want to give um you know a possibility for the player there will be a preset difficulties like you know easy, medium difficulty, or high. We will find a good name for that. Maybe we will find a good name for the Iron Man mode where you cannot save. <laughs> you just you know one way trip more or less. Uh, but when it comes to the settings, there are really a lot of things that uh, you know, comes directly to come to my mind. I mean. You can, uh, as a player, probably you we will give you a possibility to personalize uh, the impact. For example, you know, like uh, on the reputation, how your deals affect the reputation with other countries. You know, for you to it will be more difficult for you to gain reputation. It will be more difficult for your tanks to gain reputation. Also, this bonus penalty system when it comes to the battle tests, you know, let's say that your tanks will always be by default a bit like underdog condition. Um, the same goes for the all the costs, you know, be that production cost, research cost, uh, staff management cost and so on. So you can uh, so explicitly choose to have a penalty for that while the AI player will have a bonus. Let's say 20 30 percent extra for the for you and minus for them and also you can be like the when it comes to different tasks what they offer when it comes to random events you know so th th there is quite a bit uh quite a big pool of uh things that i think we will unlock for this you know bonus penalty type of system if you want to do it your own way, or again, you will be able to just uh, choose the preset option by just choosing, you know, easy, normal, hard, impossible, and Iron Man. So that, that's the, yeah. And there's another thing that we have been discussing that is, uh, that, that is actually, I would say, unavoidable if we as i said if we open a complete 20th century uh namely if you as a player if you don't really have an interest in the world war one uh, interval right you well, just you don't you you don't get kick out of that but the rest is fine i mean the interwar or maybe from the second war world war uh you really like it then we will try to come up with a system that allows you to sort of jump start certain uh, time intervals to the one that you like. So that, that's another option that 
I don't know if it will make it well it will not make it of course to the demo but if it will make it to the you know release or not too early to say but that, that, that is also I see that this as an important feature to uh, just to yeah yeah basically an era selector right yeah because yeah. I think what a lot of games do or at least I've seen is um like uh, they have like an unlock system so you everybody starts off at base one but then you you know, you move through the eras, and once you unlock each era, then when you start a new game, you know, if you want to, you can then go from that era and then beyond. For example, yeah, that's a good way. That's a good way. There will, of course, again, I mean, I, I, I use this word a lot, but unfortunately, I have to. One will have to do quite a lot of balancing, you know, because you can you can imagine that you can really arrive in different uh, era with a completely different, you know, initial conditions, right? You can be either on top of the things or you can be as an underdog, which again sort of nicely fuses with the difficulty settings we just discussed. And the, um, I suppose the last thing is, obviously we've talked about history that exists. Is there any, um, so is there going to be, I suppose what would be classed as like an endless mode? Or you know, will or is there going to be a defined endpoint to let's say the campaigns? Uh, you mean endless mode that it will the the time will never stop, so there will be yeah, no yeah, final let, time, right? Yeah, like let's say you get to the the let's say I don't know the present era or whatever you guys are aiming for, um, and then. Will will there still be random events that will happen? Will there still be things that happen, or will there just be a date, let's say, where it's like, okay, you have been successful, <laughs> you've won the tycoon, basically. Um, I think there will be a date. There will be a date when the game stops, because it's, um, well, you know, just by by the by the definitive logic you know let's say you have run out of the events you know out of campaigns yeah. wars and it's world war peace nobody needs your tanks anymore yeah. so you, you have to start investing in the smartphones and uh, dice and technology for example i don't know um so i think there will be an end if it will coincide with say year 2000 or it will be year 2001 i don't know yet. We have not discussed it, Lars, right? No, not in detail. We haven't. So it'll run the course of history, but like you say, it, it's basically around the millennium. So uh, I don't know. Let's blame the Y2K bug, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we will see. We will see. I mean, it's, um... it's a chapter untold so far. Yep. <laughs> so. Hmm. Exactly, exactly. But uh, I'm pretty sure that there will be pretty of time for the players to enjoy the game, you know, during those five uh, epochs. And um, try to break it with all possible and impossible means and this is create this either curse designs or the winning designs. And uh, yeah, I think if we do everything as we plan, it should be enough, especially with the sandbox mode. Because then the time becomes kind of more relevant. You don't really know what to expect. You have much more responsibility in terms of where the world will end up, so to say. And um, yeah, there's uh, some few features that I think will also fuse nicely in the setting. Um, but I don't want to reveal them just yet. But they, they will really extend uh, what you can do in the game and with your tanks. And uh, to some degree, you can say that, that those features, they will be endless, I would say. Right, Lars? Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. One, can, one can see them as sort of endless. But yeah. we'll, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to save that for a later date, I suppose. But no, as as always, like uh, thank you uh, for for doing this. Like it's um, it's really nice to get some insight and stuff on the on what's going on. And I, I know a lot of people are interested, and it's it's looking awesome right now.
Thank you, Anthony. Great and it, it's here. nice to get the feedback from you, you know, from your subscribers. It's um, it's really good opportunity for us to showcase it, to get the to get the commands to let people see that. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's book another date in say two weeks. See what happens then. And uh, yeah, thank you for today. I'd just like to thank Trigger Hippie, Universe, Conte Baraka, Elove Goat, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Hans, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.